Yo, it's your favorite N-word, Terrence Prescott Barnes, and I'm here to talk to you about some things, and you already know how I do. All right, so 25. 25 is about Marvel versus Capcom 3. And yes, it's still going. I recently followed somebody, a channel that shows Marvel versus Capcom 3 and all kinds of tournaments. So I'm very happy about that. But my favorite moment when it comes to Marvel versus Capcom 3 is when I was finally getting down into the ranked mess uh ranked matches and I got in I got into a matchup with this dude that had Chun Li and two other characters and he took at least It was more than 60 seconds when he spanked me, but then um, we got matched up again, and I got the first hit. His chun -Li went down in seven seconds. He rage quit it, and I was dying. <laughs> I, was, I was dying when that happened, all right? And guess what my team was? Saiyan Ko, Akuma, and Sentinel. And I have this way of using Cyan Ko, Akuma, and Sentinel. And it deals with her doing her um, attack where she throws a chain up and she does this windmill motion. And Akuma doing his um, whirlwind kicks and Sentinel using the assist of the three arms going diagonally up. And when you play with Cyan Ko, she has this very fucked up ability of teleporting and going from one side of the screen to the other. And it's very crazy when you pair her with somebody who has assist that goes across the entire screen. So, I got the first hit that time and Chun Li died in seven seconds because I was going back and forth uh, with Cyan Ko and Akuma and he couldn't read me. So, he couldn't block that whole seven seconds, and because I wasn't using the um the glitch where you can just go and do infinity combos and whatnot, because I didn't know anything about it at that time, and that was when it first came out. The combo reset allowed all kinds of damage, and she just couldn't handle it. So Chun Li died in seven seconds. Rage quit. And then I got a message, and I went on about the rest of my life laughing about it. <laughs> number 24 number 24 is about 007 agent under fire that was one of my favorite video games of all time and i really like how the game played um I was a huge fan of first person shooters at that time and I played all the way through the game with my little brother and we um I liked everybody, I liked all of the characters and whatnot. And um we started playing multiplayer because you know the GameCube days and I had all of this stuff and we used to have these matches where it would be only frenesi shotguns and grenade cannons. <sighs> Long story short, those were some of the most thrilling matches of my life in a video game. Never know who won, well, never know who would win, and it was just all kinds of action the entire time because the Frenessi shotguns are very powerful, and with the way that I be <laughs> ducking and shit, and we be moving and, and strolling and all this other kind of crap, them niggas had some strategies in that game. So, we still talk about it to this day. 
the damn Frenessy shotgun, boy. <sighs> Good times. <laughs> So 23, 23 is about this group I had on Facebook called Pokemon, uh, free Pokemon giveaways. And I would spend my time trying to uh, find kids around the place, um, find other adults around the place. And I would provide them event Pokemon because I had action replay and I've been doing it since uh, 2005 when I was over in Iraq. And I first started doing it with uh, Leaf Green and Fire Red, and I had both cartridges and multiple um, Game Boy Advances and whatnot. So, um, I played, it was either gold or silver, and I've been playing since then. And I played those games 100%, um, no action replay whatsoever. And it's very time consuming. So. If you're thinking about an argument of why can't you play the game correctly and whatnot, because I can do that. But the main reason for having free Pokemon giveaways was giving um, people who can't make it to Toys R Us and all of the, uh, the GameStop stuff, getting the event Pokemon, and I would clone them and hand people Jirachis, uh, the other Pokemon I can't remember at the time, and I had that group uh, since. I think it was Diamond. I had it since Diamond and Pearl. Um, moved over to Platinum, moved over to the fifth generation, and when Pokemon came out with Generation Six, I said, I'm done. So, um, and I still play the game legitly, but then at the time when I had extra replay, I would always provide the the starter Pokemon for everybody, uh, starter Pokemon for myself, and I wouldn't hack um, the EVs and IVs, I wouldn't hack stats or anything. I would just provide myself with Pokemon that would pretty much be impossible to get by yourself. A lot of great times, a lot of great Pokemon. I had all of the shiny versions of what I wanted and whatnot, but uh, Pokemon is dust now, and I'm moving on. Twenty two is about Mabinagi and I played Mabinagi for at least seven years. A lot of great times were Ordova when I had that fro going around with them double swords, just final hitting everybody. So so cutting them boys up and the monsters up. But there was this one shadow mission that was my favorite and it was a three player shadow mission and you would go through the city uh, killing skeletons and there was another type of enemy. I can't remember it at this moment, but playing it by yourself is very difficult and that's what I would do. And on the days when it was like the lucky shadow mission where you get more experience and more items and things, I would full heartedly go do that by myself. And I had thunder and fireball at level one and I would just like go through that mission and it was very fun because it was never easy playing it on hard mode. So it would always be a battle of um, if the lag is gonna catch me or is the final boss gonna catch me. And the final boss is a doppelganger and this motherfucker bring out eight people. As soon as you aggro him, he bring out eight people and next thing you know, you trapped by a damn octopus. But because of fireball, I could annihilate the final boss very easily. And I would go through using thunder on everybody else. Oh, it was a ghost. It was a very ugly ghost. It, was, it looked like the um, the other enemy in the stage was a ghost that looks like it would be from the anime series area. But, getting this map and not give us great time. So 21 is about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, if I could talk right, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. And I played all versions of it. I played the first version of X-Men Legends too. But um, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is a very great game. And I'm, 
I'm not really a fan of Marvel like I used to be, but at the same time, the, the nostalgia of a multiplayer game like that and being able to play it with other people is great. And my favorite thing about the game was when um, we got to the prison and we got to Miss Marvel, Spider-Gwen, and the other Spider-Man. And um, we was beating their ass, me and my husband. We was tagging that game. But <laughs> and as soon as they went down, I was tagging Miss Marvel and Spider Gwen, and when they went down on their knees, I would take whatever character I was using, and I would walk up to them and be like, "Girl, you good? Girl, you all right?" Just to make my husband laugh, and he still be laughing at this shit. I love him. Hell, I might play the game when I get home tonight. So 20 belongs to Metroid Other M. And it's a, one of the Metroid games that's not really talked about, which I don't understand because the game played like a movie. And at the time when it came out, uh, Khalees came out with her fourth album and Brave had this remix. It's called the Dark Sky Remix. And when I tell you this shit be having me space tripping, boy, I'll be gone. So... The combination of that Khalees remix, that entire album, and Metro Other M was a great time in my life. Other M was highly enjoyable. Um, I give it a 10 out of 10. And my favorite moment in that game was the final boss. But the final boss was horrendous. In a horror mode, if you played that game, you know what I'm talking about. number 19 belongs to banjo Tooie, and the whole conundrum around the jinjos and the minjos and if you know what i'm talking about that whole whistling and help this shit was hilarious but <laughs> <laughs> Woo! great times so that's my favorite thing about Banjo Tooie is the Jinjos and the Minjos, and they were so great as just side characters that I made an entire species of monsters based off of them in one of my stories that trickles over the entirety of the Tristone era. And I still find them hilarious, and you know I was fucking lit when Banjo Tooie was put on Super, uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and his final smash involved the Jinjos. Good times, boy, good times. Number 18 belongs to Borderlands, and Borderlands is one of my favorite video games of all time because there was so much shit talking in it. But my favorite thing about Borders, uh, Borderlands is gaming with my two favorite video gamers and it would be um uh, Chris who I was in an army with at uh, Fort Stupid, Georgia and um, Nick who I met through this old website but um Nick got me on Borderlands and I was like wow this is beautiful entirely animated great graphics great shit talking great characters great weapons it was a great world. And one of my favorite things about that game was the um the DLC on the first one where you had to go to this arena and I forget the amount of waves. Um I don't want to say 100 because I could be wrong, but it was a lot of waves and you had to go through that whole DLC without getting disconnected with your people and one time <laughs> This one time, boy. We was doing it, and we was, I think we was up in the 70 ranges, and Nick's cousin disconnected. That motherfucker was hot. We was hot. Whoo, we was hot. Cause that shit was hard. And we had to go back and finish it with Chris, and 
we did it. We got the DLC. We got all the trophies in the game. It was great. But at the same time, his cousin did not get that trophy. That was bullshit. And he never got it. It was crazy. Goodness, it was crazy. I had the siren. Nick had the soldier. Chris had um, Brick. And Nick's cousin had um, Mordecai, I believe. <sighs> great times. So 17, this video game has one of the best soundtracks of all time. And I think it's one of the most beautiful things ever created. Final Fantasy X is the best Final Fantasy in the series. It's, um, first of all, it has Waka. I would bang him out. Secondly, it had Riku and thirdly, it had Lulu. <sighs> When I got them through that entire spare grid the first time, I was like, heaven is real. Great times. Lovely great times. And that was playing it without hacking it. So, um, the spare grid is a, is a hell of a drug and you just cannot escape it sometimes. <sighs> I remember the last time I played it, it was, um, maybe a couple of years ago. I was eating that game up. But... The spear grid in itself is a very beautiful masterpiece and whoever created that concept I hope they When their time comes, I hope their paradise in the life uh, in the afterlife is the grandest Yes, just ultimate mm. So 16 16 belongs to one of the video games that I consider uh, top tier. Um, top 10, if not top 5, in its Fantasy Star Universe. It was a PS2 game and it had a crossover function with uh, PlayStation and PC. And I played on the PC and the PlayStation. And I played it on um, 2006 when I got back from my wreck. And um, when I found out about it, I instantly bought it, um, got my subscription, started playing the game, was enjoying it. It was great times. And I played it all the way through until the game, until um, Sega finally shut down the service. And I have to say that Fantasy Star Universe is my favorite thing about the game was um, on my third account on uh, on the last year of it, they had this event where. Some things was happening, and the um, Agito Repka boards were up for grabs, and it was on the final part of the mission, and it was like this uh, this square area, and it was you with the five other people in the party, and y'all was out there kicking ass and everything, and there was a high chance of an Agito Repka board dropping every time, and I swear to goodness. <laughs> My first time doing it, I got the Guido replica board. And then I was like, wow. I mean, if, if this is what everybody is going for, wow. But I made it into a neutral Guido replica. People hated me. I got it up to 5'7 grinding and I gave it to my elf, um, Primatistic Elge. And she's a character in one of my stories. But um, I gave it to her because she was the weakest in physical power and I got everybody else some other big barbarian swords and whatnot. But the Agito Repka acquiring that on their first event mission and I didn't even know it. I was satisfied. Every, everybody else wasn't, but then again, I went with that party again and again until everybody got it. And then guess what? I got it two times, all right? <laughs> and I gave it to somebody who, um. It was somebody in the party that's been doing it longer than everybody else, and I just gave it to that person. Um, no biggie, no skin off my back. It's just an item on a video game, and I'm a friendly, a friendly gamer like that. So um, I was dissatisfied when Fantasy Star Universe ended. Very dissatisfied. Number 15 belongs to Beetle Adventure Racing, and 
It was a Nintendo 64 game, and at that time in my life, I was a big Mandy Moore fan, and when she dropped it, um, Volkswagen Beetle in her candy video, I was like, yeah, get it, girl. So, um, I was very huge on Beetle Adventure Racing, and I gave, um, <laughs> other singers and rappers and stuff to different colored vehicles and me and my little brother would go through that game and it's one of my favorites because me and my little brother enjoyed trying to unlock everything and it was a very wondrous game and there was a lot to find and the multiplayer was kick ass too mount mayhem sunset sands and uh, metro madness great tricks video game music supremacy Whoever did those, I'm gonna bone them. So, um, I love bringing this game up because everybody be like, nigga, you six foot three, what are you doing playing that game? And it was, um, Hello Kitty Cube Frenzy. And I didn't give a damn about Hello Kitty. All I know is, at that time in my life, when it came out, my grandmother was working for BMW, and she would get free video games and whatnot, and we would play every last one of them. And it was a PS1 game, and we ran through every game she uh, brought home and whatnot. And Hello Kitty Cute Frenzy was a hell of a puzzle game. One of the best, actually, it's the best puzzle game I ever played in my life, and I ain't gonna let nobody else tell me different at all. Me and my little brother went through that game. And then it was like, oh, we got some more levels for y'all. Yes. So, Buster Move 2 on a PS2 was a game that I got when I was over in Iraq. And. If you know me, I love my puzzle games and whatnot. And, um, I play as much of them as possible, and Buster Move 2 had this one thing about it, and it's not in any other games to my recollection, and it's where if you hit the sides multiple times, and you hit the bubble on a connector, and you get uh, get three of them together, um, confetti would rain down the screen, and a whistle would go with it. And I thought this shit was so lit. I think I was 21 years old and I was like, wow, this is great. Should be celebrating my um, 21 years of living with some people I know, but I was over in Iraq and I was like, well, that's my celebration. Buster Move 2 was my celebration on my 21st birthday. Now we have number 12. Number 12, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, SNES days. Great game. Perfect game. Soundtrack was ridiculous. Difficulty was ridiculous. I loved everything about it. Then they made a remake, and I could never get it. Cause, you know why? I was over in Iraq. 2005 when they dropped this shit so when I got back I had to I, I was I was still on my PS2 stuff but then I got out in 2007 and went home and saw that my older brother had this shit and that threw me for a loop um and it was beautiful it was real beautiful all right TMNT Turtles in Time the remake very beautiful but I can't buy it because it was up for sale no more. So what I had to do was borrow my older brother's account, download it, get it on the PS3, then the PS3 burnt out and I could never play it again. One of the best games of my life. Never played it again. I played it once, went through it probably three times, never played it again. I was mad as hell, but it's one of the best damn games of all time. Then we have number 11. So number 11 is uh, one of my favorite video games of all time and it's Zombies Ate My Neighbors. And um, I'm, 
one of the messed up things about me is that um one of my favorite things in fiction are zombies zombies don't ever get a good story because every time somebody makes up a zombie story it's supposed to be fictional but they make it so goddamn real it's ridiculous they try to bring so much realism into it it's stupid i can't stand no goddamn zombie story <sighs> but zombies ain't my neighbors it was great all magical all fake everything was great i was killing monsters shooting them up me and my little brother went to that game several times and i went to the game went through the game one more time when i had my wii and um it was it was so nostalgic uh, it was great <sighs> And yes, I do have a Zombies Ate My Neighbors fanfic. It's, it's, it's pretty splendid. You'll enjoy it someday. <laughs>
and I could whoop Mario ass anytime I want to as myself with a lavender beard and red eyes. Ricardo got me a switch. And for that, I'll probably eat them out tonight. But the Me Gunners moveset is one of the best movesets of all time. You can argue with me all you want to. You can say that Ganondorf's cheap ass is the best. You can say Luigi's overpowered ass is the best. You can say that Ike's over the top, ridiculous, overpowered ass is the best. You can say that Sephiroth's new ass is the best. Long ass sword. But the meat gunner? Mm, mm, mm hmm. Yes. Yes, that's all I needed. Killing Mario every day. <laughs> Woo! Killing Mario every day, nigga. What's up? Every time I see that little bitch ass plumber, I don't like Mario. And um, here's why. Um, it's been it's been more than a decade. It's been more than two decades, and they still making Mario games. Let that nigga retire and make something else up. Bring some new characters. Bring some new ideas. What is y'all doing? This is ridiculous. I've been writing since 1997, and I have over 2,000 characters in my head. What is Nintendo doing? Y'all can do something better with y'all greedy asses. All y'all trying to do is make money. But still, the Me Gunner. Nigga, they're fucking Ford smash it. They're Ford smash it. Oh my gosh. They're Ford smash it. They're do 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 do. Ooh. Ooh. And now my gun can't do that. But that motherfucking gun can, boy. And then a down smash? Whoo, 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 whoo. What is you gonna do? Both sides. Oh my gosh. Both sides. And then the up one, just like Samus. And then they fix the engine where each hit will hold somebody done and this five hits then they go up and then you be like oh, star ko it's great motherfucking great it's great it's great and that's not even a special moves it's great oh my gosh the me gunners running attack the not back on that motherfucker so um so we got the Nintendo Switch and we started unlocking characters, right? Samus. Samus is running a team. One of the king, one of the queenest KOers in the game. They did the Me Gunner wrong. Cause that Me Gunner knocked back, boy. That's all, all me and Hikardo do are the smash hits in that running a team. That's all we do. Now, he don't play the game like I do, because I know that every every character has more than 25 attacks. And um, I'll be up in the air. Oh my gosh, the Me Gunner standard attack. That will, that will get a nigga off me quickly. And then that back attack. You can't tell me there's somebody better than the Me Gunner in Smash Brothers. Even though there are other KO Kingpins, the the best thing about the Me Gunner, even though I just said all them things about the Smash attacks and the running attack, the best thing about the Me Gunner is the charge shot paired with the Gunner missile. And you want to know why? Because in the footage that I have on my other YouTube channel. And a lot of the videos, when I play with the Me Gunner, you can see me spamming the hell out of them Gunner missiles. And when I know I can hit somebody with their charge shot, about 90% of the time, I will do a missile or charge shot than another missile. And the combination of the charge shot and the missile hitting right after, killing niggas. Now, what I don't like is that Samus don't have that. Because Samus cannot, uh, Samus or Dark Samus cannot spam their missiles. But the Me Gunner, the spamming on this shit. I will have somebody over their edge in a heartbeat. And that's not even a down special. Including the Lunar Launch that makes sure I get on the stage all the time. Whew. I'm going to stop talking about the Me Gunner. You know why? Cause I can go on hours for that motherfucker, but in a KO King pen for real, boy. <laughs> Woo, the me gunner, boy. 
I stopped being mad at Nintendo. Dead ass. Cause that's all I wanted. Cause in um in Mario Kart Wii, you could play as the Miis. And that's all I did, play as the Miis on it. And I used to whoop people's ass all the time on Mario Kart Wii online. I had 9999 all the time and I was playing as automatic, not manual, beating Daisy and Funky Kong with a me on them. On automatic? Yeah. But then they put them in Smash Brothers and I was like, you know what, I can't stay mad at Nintendo all the time. It, it's, it's been a love-hate uh, relationship ever since, so I'm just going, going about the rest of my life happy that I finally got to kill Mario. Number eight. So, back in the GameCube days, um, and the... the it's not really a brag, but I was the first person to get a Blake, uh, a Blake, a per, uh, the first person to get a Blake GameCube at the Best Buy in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I stood there, um, got it, went on about my business, bought it my time until Smash Brothers came out. But then I got all the games and whatnot. Then it came out with NBA Street, and I love NBA Jam. It was a hell of a game. And um, when I found out that the NBA Street was fake, I got it. And um, my little brother played it more than me, and um, and then I found out they put 3L motherfucking W on the game, and you know it was over since then, cause all I did, all I know, all what is me, is dark skin black cheeks. When I got Naturi Naughton, nigga, <laughs> it was Naturi Naughton, Briggs, and Magma Man the entire time. Once I got all three of them unlocked. That game was a shit to me. My little brother had a, um, a whole other team. It didn't um, require, it didn't have any female characters on it, but um, it had them um, unlockable characters, and he loved that damn abominable snowman. But that damn the Tory Naughton boy, I had it. Ooh, when they say it's serving it on me, she said, ah, give me that dunk, boy. Whew. Where has my youth gone? So number seven, uh, number seven is gonna go to Southport Rally, and I want to tell you why. Cause um, Southport Rally is one of the um, my 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 favorite video games of all time are racing games, and Southport Rally was just um, it was just it was puzzling. Cause you you'll sit there and think we 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 have Mario Kart, we have um. Crash Team Racing, we have all these other imaginative racing video games at that time, right? Then they came out with South Park Rally, and it blew my mind how they made that engine up. And then, we only beat the game five times. That's how difficult that game is. So, you damn right. South Park Rally is embedded in my motherfucking brain, bitch. Embed, uh, embedded all up in here. The South Park Rally was... They talk shit on that game. They made me quit. They whooped my ass and defeated me plenty of times and it was so hard to beat that game. But me and my little brother ran through that game only five times. And I will probably never be able to run through that game ever again if I ever play it again. And then you have number six. Castle Crashers, and yes, I love my multiplayers, but Castle Crashers is very beautiful. I love my cartoon games, and I have to say, my favorite moment in that game was unlocking that NG Gold Sword, and it's the one that's shaped like that, and then cut up in the come back out again, and it has that, uh, that death critical ability on the weapon. Woo! Mmm! Woo! That made leveling so easy with that giraffe, but... Great times.
So, number five. Um, number five is very puzzling because everybody, and I'm pretty sure, um, I, I think out of an 88% capacity, most video gamers have played Streets of Rage 2 from that time period. And Streets of, Rage, uh, Streets of Rage 2 is critically acclaimed for having one of the best soundtracks of all time. Love it. Still play that music to this day. But there was this one thing in Streets of Rage 2, and I will never forget it. And it's getting punched by two enemies at the same time from both sides, and your whole life boy is gone. And I can't stand Garcia and Donovan, but... The, it, it happened so rarely that the first time it happened, you was like, you was like that the whole time. You was like, you're never, never gonna happen again. But boy, <laughs> whoo, that heart is difficult, there, boy. <laughs> you will quickly jump in the air and take that punch on the hardest difficulty, cause you know that double punch, boy, and you need all the lives you can get on the hardest move. Uh, on, um, if I could talk right, on the hardest mode. Goodness gracious. Great times. Man, my little brother my little brother is the best person to play Streets of Rage 2 with. Oh my god. We played the hell out of that game and then we played the heaven out of that game. But the one thing that puzzles me about Streets of Rage 2 is you have um all these America's next top model contestants who do not walk like Blaze Phil. number four and it took some deliberating for the top five in all seriousness but i want to give number four to dynasty warriors the, the the entirety of the series is great i still play that game have um a version of it on the switch i have a version of dynasty warriors on all consoles i've ever owned and um my favorite thing about dynasty warriors is somehow developing a crush on Chow Hao Yuen. And if you've seen him, and if you know me, I love some motherfucking eyebrows. And that nigga got some big eyebrows. But the the crush developed with him when, um, I think it was Dynasty Warriors 4. And on that stage, um, on that mountain stage, um, Mount Ding Jun, I think, he come out there with all them enchants. And this nigga is, he, he fully blazing. He fully super saiyan. And he come out there and he whooping everybody ass. And you have to wait until he lose all the enchants just to be able to fight him. And at that time, I hated his ass. And then Dynasty Warriors 8 came out. And they gave him a, a swim coach suit for um, the DLC outfits and whatnot. And when I tell you, when they gave him that damn swim team coach outfit... I had the felt. That's it. So number three, I'm gonna give it to the bouncer, which is um a PS2 game. It's a SquareSoft game and um um the bouncer is the it's it's one of my favorites but the bouncer was so big that it really made me want to make animated series and the story itself it plays like a movie the video game itself is fucking splendid and if you know it it has the history of being the first game or one of the first games they did the ragdoll effect when you would um hit somebody and render them um, useless until they recover from being knocked down. And um, me and my little brother thought it was hilarious. But um, the bouncer, boy. When you get, when you progress through the game and get a high enough rank, on um, the final battle, when Doragon takes his shirt off, when you beat his ass. <laughs> When you beat him down, he up there talking about some. This cannot be. No, it can be. You got your ass whooped. And you go get it whooped again, coughing up blood and shit. What? 
Me and my little brother paused that game and we died. We died. We was gone. We laughed so hard. I think I think we lost a good maybe maybe I'm over exaggerating, but I think we lost a good seven minutes of our life when Dorgun said this cannot be and that blood came in his mouth. I was like, this is the most fakest looking blood in my life that I've ever seen. But that moment was comedy gold. Oh my gosh. Surprise, surprise. If you know where it's from, you know it's X-Men Legends. And if you know me, my team, Jubilee, Psylocke, Colossus, and Iceman. But when I first got into them sewers and them bitches came out there talking about some surprise, surprise, and they jumped back throwing them knives out, nah. Nah, nigga. Nah. Nah, chill, chill. Chill out, Acclaim. Nah, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, don't do that. No. <laughs> oh, no. We laughed and laughed and cried and cried and died and died. It was horrible. Why would y'all do that? Why would y'all put that in a video game? That was, that was comedy gold, too. It was ridiculous. It was... It, it, it made me feel glad that I survived pneumonia as a baby. Because... We live in a very unfair world, but when people put stuff like that in video games and them bitches talking about surprise, surprise, it didn't get their ass whooped. Hey guys, it's me. And we made it to number one and it took forever, right? Um. I'm gonna make it quick. So, Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2, Dreamcast. Um, didn't play it, never owned a Dreamcast, but my cousin did, and I did not know about the game until Fantasy Star 1 and 2. Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2 came to the GameCube, and I got it with the quickness, because I saw it, and I was like, oh shit. It, it, um, it's not cyberpunk, but it's future, and I love the hell out of space. Out of space, future, mm, love the hell out of it. So, I got the game. Fell in love with it. Me and my little brother fell in love with it. Made all kind of characters. Fell in love with it. Played every stage. Fell in love with it. Got characters up to level 120. Fell in love with it. Um. And then um, life happens and you know, things happen and you grow up and then um, you go back and get it again. <laughs> and when I tell you that Fantasy Star Online one and two, the the last copy I got. That was a pretty penny, a real pretty penny. And then I finally got the action replay that works with the GameCube, real pretty penny. Hundreds of dollars, yeah. But um, I know back in the day, I was like, I'm gonna get me that, uh, give me that damn action replay and hack this game one time. Did it, got, um, got the eight characters that can do magic up to level one, uh, 175. Uh, hacked all of the weapons, hacked all of the, um, the, the mags, hacked all of the armors, um, all of the items and stuff, just so I can see them. And, um, and then, like, back in the day, we played the hardest mode. We got up there to it because we had characters at level 120, but we never played it online and we never collected everything like that because we couldn't because we didn't know anything about getting on the internet, buying a Sega subscription and all this stuff because there was a lot of information back then. And we was in school and we had all this other shit to do and he was playing basketball and I was still drawing it right and getting my ass in trouble going to a different school because I was cussing out the faculty and the principals and shit. Um, so, um... There was a lot of times I could not focus on Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2, but when I got that action replay, that game became very beautiful and I finally played every stage on the hardest difficulty and I have to say, that, that copy is staying with me forever. The memory cards are staying with me forever. F Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2, 
best video game of all time. And all of the times I play with my little brother, best times in the world. Haven't played them or played with them with the um with the latest copy yet, but it's gonna happen someday. It's gonna happen. And that's it. That's the whole top 25 favorite video game moments of all time. And favorite video games and all the other stuff. Um I think it was a good bit and I'm gonna uh, finish my shift to go home. Um uh try to do 100 push-ups again and uh move the bedroom around and um finally tuesday night after chest day at the gym because you know um 100 push-ups in the morning then more working out the chest in the arm um, in the evening great times and i'm going to try to um get hikardo to play some more video games no telling which ones we'll play um because there's a light can't just there's a light but see you later